Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make handmade paper using recycled paper or any other material. Say mix some flowers in here. You can use it for crafts, uh, making cards, writing letters, and without really using any high grade, high quality equipment. So stick around and hope you enjoy. So I've already assembled one of these because I've done this project before, but let me just talk you through how I set it up. So this is the frame that you'll use to pour your paper slurry into to make it paper shaped. All I have done is I bought two canvases from Michaels because they're way cheaper for a frame than if I was to buy uh, frames that would just be too expensive. So I took the canvas off, you can still sort of see the canvas there and um, I attached these wood strips to it. Obviously, I just snapped them. I didn't even do anything fancy, and then I nailed them in, so that way it fits like that. Um, I mean, obviously, it's not perfect, but it works just fine. And then, as far as the screen part, you'll see that this would be the front of the frame of the canvas, so you're gonna wanna attach it to the back, so that way it's just flat across and you use a staple gun and you just staple it as tight as you can without ripping it. And all I used was a uh, cheapest possible uh, screen that I got from Home Depot. And then you'll also need to cut another separate bit of screen. It doesn't have to be exact by any means, but just roughly the same size because you're gonna want it to put over the top of your paper slurry as it's drying just to squeegee off. Got a paint mixer here, you can use a ruler, anything with a straight edge, you're gonna wanna use that. So that way you don't ruin your, your paper. But we'll see that in a minute. Lastly, I just want to explain these boards. Um, in any official paper making tutorial that you'll see, they have all this equipment that's like a press that's gonna keep the paper you know nice and pressed together for its entire drying time and I just I don't have any of those things and I don't think that they're really necessary so I had these boards they're really just um, painting boards but you can use any kind of wood that you want um, and when I'm done making the paper I transfer it onto here just so that it dries the start it begins to dry flat and I place it down with a fan on it and then eventually you know I take it off but I just want it to dry flat and I need something sturdy to transfer it over to the mat. I've just got some tap water in here. Uh, the amount of water does not matter at all. As long as you have some space to put in your recycled paper, you'll be fine. I'm gonna take some paper now and rip it into strips and throw it in there. Normally, I would use paper that has writing on it or, or something from a book or any print that I have, but I don't really have any of that right now, so I'm just gonna be using regular computer paper and then some pieces of newspaper and circular just to see the effect that it gives, because every different kind of paper that you use will look differently at the end. The time that you spend mixing it really is up to you. If you're using pages ripped from a book and you want some of the words, some of the letters to show up in the final page, then you'd obviously go for a little bit less so it's not as finely pureed. Or you can use different settings on your blender. You can play around with it. I am using a blender that I don't use for any other reason but this, but I just I have a magic bullet so I never use a blender for anything else. So. I'm gonna put this into the water. There is some water at the bottom of here too, just enough really to cover. 
And then I'm gonna take the slurry here that we have and just with this submerged just slightly, I'm just gonna really pour it on top. And then slowly lift it up. And see over here on the left how there's some screen showing. I'm gonna try to fix that by submerging it in the water a little bit more, breaking up this clump with my hand. You don't wanna to be too aggressive, because then you'll get a whole bunch of spaces. That's not fun. All right, so that's not too bad. And like I said before, the tub that I use normally when I do something like this is smaller. And the way that that helps is that I can really just rest this on there and then I can squeegee off the water. But I can't do that on this one because it's a little bit too wide. So I've improvised. And I have these strips to rest it. But that's just because I'm not prepared and I, I'm in a new house, I don't have a lot of stuff. So what you're gonna do then is lift off this top frame. That was only to keep the paper shape. Now I have some more of my screen and I'm just going to put that on the top. You know what? I'm actually going to spray this with some Pam. That just occurred to me. That might help. Off camera, I just sprayed this screen with some Pam because it will keep it from really sticking too much also not required it's just something that I know works a little bit better then I'm gonna take this paint mixer and just squeegee off the water now I'm going to flip this over slowly peel up screen, fix any slight issues, and then I'm going to take this board that I have, and then just fill it up. And now we're just going to wait for it to dry. I'm going to uh, put it in front of a fan. You know, it probably will take about a day to dry depending on the humidity and the conditions inside your house or if you put it outside. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and make probably two or three more with some different elements mixed in and we'll see how they come out. It's at this point that I usually get a little creative with it. I have some flowers that are dying from my garden and I'm going to mix some of those in. Um, I'll probably do the dahlias separate um, and maybe some leaves and we'll see what we get.
as you can tell, I had a little bit of trouble with this one here. Um, if you are more patient than I am, you probably won't get the messed up edges like I have, but it, it is handmade paper and it looks handmade, so I'm fine with it. I'm very excited to see how these dry. This one is making me hungry because it looks like a pesto of some sort, but we'll see. It should probably take maybe 24 hours. I'm gonna put the fan on and continue to check the status of them and I'll be back when they're dry. Here are some other examples of pages that I've made from different source materials. This one was on lined paper um, with handwriting on it in pen. It's got sort of like a bluish green tinge to it. This one I think was the same, but it's way thicker. I think I probably threw in some cardstock on there as well. And there's some bleeding from something um, I probably used an organic material, maybe like a flower, and it maybe dried against it, or maybe the page had highlighter on it. I'm not really sure. This one, I put uh, food coloring in it. This one's pretty cool. And I just wanted to show you a practical use for these homemade pages. Obviously, you could use them for whatever you want, but the reason that I made them the first time around is because I was making this book. Uh, the binding was a little bit difficult because the pages were so thick, but you know, obviously I could make the pages thinner next time around. I just, you know, didn't really know what I was doing. I was just experimenting. Um, so I just wanna show you some more examples of the effect that you get when you mix different things in. So this first one was a pink flower and it dyed the whole page pink. So I'm not sure if that's going to happen with the one that we did, um, but you can't really tell until after the page is dried. So that's what's really neat about this. Also, I mixed some actual flowers in here and it came out really cool because they're mixed half in with the page and then half outside of the page. So that was really neat. Some of these pages are completely covered in paint uh, or other uh, cardstock. This one was pretty neat. I mixed in pages of an old book and then also some flowers, again, half in the page, half out. And the way that you do that is you put the page in, you put the leaf in after the page has maybe sat for like two or three minutes and things have settled. This one again, I put some flowers mixed in. This one I actually burned holes in and then sewed around it. This one was crushed up leaves, which I really like the effect of that. Crushed up leaves here once again. This is just ripped up old pages from uh, an older yellowing book. So I really like that effect as well. So now that you've seen both of those, we'll wait and see how our pages dry. But that's what I really like about this is that each thing is unique. And even if you do the same technique, you get a different outcome. So my paper has been drying for 24 hours. And here is the paper with the pink flower. And this is the paper with the dahlia in it. Still looks a little bit like pesto. Definitely not gonna be good for writing, um, but will be neat in more of those scrapbooking projects. And then this is the page that had the newsprint ripped up. My cats decided to rip off the corner of this. So uh, word to the wise, don't leave it out to dry in an obvious spot if you have animals. But all in all, I think they turned out pretty cool. Once again, thank you for watching and stay safe everybody.